Erev Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yumi Mesechet Masrot. We're up to Perik Aleph Mishnah Zayin. Today's Mishnah should be Le Nishmad Neria Ben Svetlana Aranbaiv and Eliyahu Ben Burcha Israelov, Minuchatam Beganeden Amen. Today's Mishnah is going to teach us when wine and oil are considered completely processed because Mivoshim explain grapes that are meant for wine making and olives that are meant for oil are not considered finished, which will be called fully processed until they have been made into wine or oil. In the times of the Mishnah, the Mifarshim explain, wine was made by placing grapes on a slanted surface known as the upper wine press and stepping on them to squeeze out their juice. The juice would then flow down the slanted surface through a pipe into a cistern where it would stay to ferment. Now, as it fermented, grape seeds and pieces of peel that had flowed into the cistern along with the juice would gradually rise to the top and they would be removed. The juice was then poured into barrels where it would spend more time fermenting. The first part of the Mishnah is going to teach us when wine is considered finished so that it can no longer be drunk even as a snack without being tithed. Just like we explained earlier, just like with produce, wine that is not yet finished may be drunk only as a snack. And the Mishnah begins, Hayayin Mishri Kafe, wine is considered completely processed once he skims it to remove the seeds and peels that rise to the top while it ferments in the cistern. Afal even after he skimmed the wine in the cistern, Kolet minagat mina he may still collect wine from the upper wine press and from the pipe leading from the upper wine press to the cistern and drink that wine as a snack without separating masrot because since that wine has not yet reached the cistern and was not skimmed, he may still, we may still drink it as a snack. Now the Mishnah is going to teach us the rule for oil. In the times of the Mishnah, oil was made by crushing olives to a pulp with a mortar or millstone. The olive pulp was then placed in a rough sack, typically made of ropes woven together. A heavy beam would be lowered onto the sack to squeeze the oil out of the pulp, and the oil would flow through the sack into a trough where it, where it collected together. The Mishnah teaches when oil is considered finished, so that it can no longer be eaten even as a snack without separating ma'asrot. The Mishnah says, Hashem in Mishyered la'uka, oil is considered completely processed, finished, once it goes down into the trough. Afal pishyarad, even after it went down into the trough, notel min ekel, he may still take oil from the sack which has not yet flowed into the trough, umi ben hamemel, and oil from under the millstone that stuck to it when he first crushed the olives. Umi ben apatzim, and oil from between the boards of, oil, of the oil press. I'm um, sorry. And oil from between the boards of the oil press and never flowed into the trough. Vinoten la hamita vila tamchui. And put that oil onto a hot wafer, which the Rav says the Mishnah is speaking of a kind of thin wafer that was commonly smeared with oil when it was fresh out of the oven and still hot or into a hot food in a serving dish, what we call the Tamchud, the Mephoshim explained, he may put the oil in hot food that has been transferred from the pot into which it was cooked to a serving dish, he can surely place the oil onto cold food, the reason the Mishnah is telling us a chidush of putting it on a hot wafer, a hot serving bowl, we will explain later on. However, he may not put this oil into a pot or frying pan of food that has just been removed from the fire, as long as they're still hot, because the oil becomes cooked in them, and cooked food can never be eaten without separating masrot, even as a snack. And the Mithrashim explained, cooking produce is one of the things that fixes it for masrot and prohibits even snacking from it before it's tied, like we spoke about in Mishnah Hay. That's true even if the produce was not yet finished, like in our case when the oil was taken from the sack. And the Rav also explains, adding food to a hot pot can cause it to become cooked, even if the pot is no longer on the fire, what we call a klishon, if the pot and its food are still hot, their heat alone is enough to cook the new food to some extent. Therefore, if he was to add oil to the food in the hot pot or frying pan, the oil would become cooked, it would then become fixed for masel and can no longer be eaten even as a snack until its masel was separated. Therefore, it's prohibited to add such oil to pots that are still hot, even if they are no longer on the fire. However, the Mithra Shem explained this is true only for a pot that was heated on the fire. Once the hot food is poured from the pot in which it was cooking into a serving dish, the hot food is no longer able to cook things added to it because the cold dish into which it was poured has begun to cool it. That's what we know as cliche enum a secondary, a secondary utensil does not cook. That's why the Mishnah said 
that he may add the oil to a serving dish, but not to a hot pot, because a serving dish does not cook it, the hot pot, the hot pot, the hot pot does. Similarly, Mephoshim explained, when he puts the oil on a hot wafer, the oil does not get cooked because the wafer, which is very thin, begins to cool quickly after being taken out of the oven, and it does not cook the oil. Rabbi Yudah Amir, Rabbi Yudah disagrees. He says, La noten, he may put the oil that has not gone down into the trough, into anything, meaning even into a food, in a hot pot or frying pan that's no longer on the fire. Chutz mi shesh bochomets vitzir, except for something that contains vinegar or brine, which we know brine is the liquid that runs off from salted meat or fish. And the Vashim explained, according to Rabbi Yehuda, oil from which Ma'asrod have not yet been separated cannot be added to a hot pot of food that contains vinegar or brine because according to Rabbi Yehuda, a hot pot cannot cook anything once it is off the fire unless it has vinegar or brine in it. And the Rav tells us, and the Rabbi Yehuda, the Lecha does not follow Rabbi Yehuda. That is in Rabotad Mishnah Zay. Mishnah Chet now continues. We learned in Mishnah number 6, that fruits that are dried before they are used um, before they are used to fruits that are dried before they are used to do not become finished until they have been dried and collected into a pile. Right, like we like we explained in the Mishnah above, fruits that are dried before they're used do not become finished until they have been dried and collected in a pile. Figs are fruits that are dried, so the rules them for, is different. The Mishnah is going to tell us. Because it was common in the times of the Mishnah to press the dried figs together into round cakes or mash them into a barrel instead of make a pile for them. So the Mishnah is going to teach us the rule for dried figs. Ha'igul mishiach likenu. A round cake of dried figs is finished once he glazes its surface by rubbing fruit juice on it. And the Mithashim explained this was done to make it look shiny. Since this is the final step in preparing a fig cake, figs that are being dried and pressed into a cake are not considered finished until the cake has been rubbed with fruit juice. Now that we mentioned the practice of glazing dried figs with juice, the Mishnah is going to bring two machlokot, two disputes related to this. The first one about whether one may glaze dried figs with juice from fruit that had not yet had its ma'asot separated. We may glaze a fig cake by rubbing it with figs and grapes that are tevel. Tevel is produce that has become fully subject to ma'asrot, from which the ma'asrot and I have been separated. It's forbidden to eat tevel. We are allowed to glaze a fig cake by rubbing it with figs and grapes that are tevel, so the juice is squeezed out onto the fig cake. Because since the juice goes directly onto the fig cake and is either absorbed by it or runs off, it's not considered juice and is therefore not forbidden as tevel. Now the Mephoshim explained, although the juice of tevel fruits is also considered tevel, the juice being squeezed out of these grapes and figs onto the fig cake is not considered tevel because the juice has no importance on its own since it's never being collected to be used as a juice, but it's allowed to run off or go to waste. Therefore, it's not subject to the laws of tevel since it runs off and goes to waste. The juice is never considered a food and is therefore not subject to the laws of ma'asrot. However, the Mishnah says Rabbi Yehuda Oser, Rabbi Yehuda forbids it because in his opinion, the juice is considered tevel and it may not be eaten without being tithed. Therefore, according to Rabbi Yehuda, even if the fig cake had ma'asrot separated, it would still be prohibited to eat from it because of the juice that was on it. The Rav tells us, En al-Chak Rabbi Yehuda, the Lecha does not follow Rabbi Yehuda. The second makhluk has to do with the laws of Tumah. The rule is, that food cannot become tamay unless it first becomes wet through one of the seven liquids. One of these liquids is wine or grape juice. The other liquids we said were blood, oil, milk, dew, honey, and water. Now, the Chachamim and Rabbi Yehuda disagree whether figs that have grape juice rubbed onto them are not able to become tamay. The Mishnah says if someone glazes a fig cake by rubbing it with grapes, thereby wetting it with grape juice, it does not become susceptible to Tumah. Therefore, even if a source of Tumah touches the cake, it will not become Tameh. But Rabbi Yudah Amir, Rabbi Yudah says, Hukshar, the fig cake does become susceptible to Tumah because the grape juice is considered a liquid in regards to these halachot. The Rav tells us, the, the, I'm sorry, the Mishnah continues, Hagogaot Mishiadush, Dried figs that are not made into a cake are considered finished once he squash, squashes them into a barrel. Literally, Yadush is when he threshes because people would use sticks to squash the figs into a barrel until they were packed together tightly. And if he does not put them into a barrel, but he puts them into a storeroom instead, they are finished once he smooths out the pile. 
היה דש בחבית ומעגל בנגורת, he was pressing figs into a barrel or smoothing out the pile in a storm but I, but I had not yet finished, נשברה החבית and the barrel broke and the figs fell out and scattered, ונפתחה מגורה or the stars broke open so that it cannot be used anymore, לא יאכל מהם הרי, he may not eat from them as a snack without separating מעשרות from them because even though he had not yet finished packing or piling all the figs, those that he had packed or piled and smoothed are completely processed and they cannot be eaten without having מעשרות removed from them, Rabbi Yossi Matil, however Rabbi Yossi permits eating them as a snack because he holds that no figs are completely processed until all the figs have been packed into the barrel or smoothed down in the pile. And Voshim explained when more figs are added to the barrel or pile, they press down on the figs that are already there and squash them even more. Therefore Rabbi Yossi says that even if the figs that are already in the barrel or pile are not, I'm sorry, Rabbi Yossi says that even the figs that are already in the barrel or pile are not completely processed until all the figs that he intended to add have been piled on top of them. However, the Chachamim, they disagree. They hold that it's not important. The bottom figs do not need any more pressure from the new layer of figs. Therefore, once the bottom layer of figs have been squashed into the barrel or the bottom layer of the pile has been smoothed, it's considered finished. And the Rav tells us, The Halacha does not follow Rabbi Yossi. The Halacha follows the opinion of the Tana Kama. And that is an Abutai of today's Mishnah Yomi. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen va'amen. Just to point out before we conclude, I just forgot to mention, the Rav tells us, The Halakha does not follow Rabbi Yehuda in regards to both Machlokot between him and the sages. Therefore, by the last case, if someone would glaze a fig cake by rubbing it with grapes, thereby wetting it with grape juice, it would not become susceptible to Tumah. And that is in Rabotai of today's Mishnah Yomi. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen v'amen.